So, finally got all six cylinders bolted down here after that problem I had with uh, number five uh, Conrod season on the crankshaft there. But got all the uh, couplings connected permanently. The, the uh, set screws in them are all loctited in place. I got my little flywheel pulley on the back end there. So, <clears throat> I want to show you here uh, my. Uh, First of all, my phasing diagram. So this is six cylinder when the standard inline six firing order is 153624. So you can see that's what I do here. One and five, three, six, two, and four. So I use this to phase the the various pistons and camshafts. I have to have a diagram like that because each engine has its own separate camshaft here, so I have to time them right. So right at the moment here, we got uh, number one at the top, number two according to the charts on exhaust, and the exhaust valve is open. Number three is just getting close to ending intake. Number four is towards the end of power stroke. Number five is on compression stroke, and number six is uh, just starting the intake stroke. So I'll spin it over here, try to film this. So you can see the various piston movements. One's going down, two's coming up, three's going down, now coming up. So on an inline six like this, pistons one and six are phased together, and then uh, Two and five and three and four. So as I spin it over, three and four here will move together. And then I got two at the top and five at the top. So I verified it and I do indeed have the, the timing correct so that the engine will fire the way it's supposed to. I'm still working on uh, the second intake manifold. I got uh, one, two, and three hooked together here. And I'll, uh, I have it started, I just don't have it quite finished. Have it finished soon, the uh, intake manifold for the for cylinders four, five, and six. So, it's uh, moving along here. Now I gotta put the cylinder heads back on before uh, a windstorm or anything comes up and deposits a bunch of uh, grit at the cylinder bores. That definitely wouldn't be good. But anyway, uh, making some progress here. Hope to have it started within the next uh, day or so. So, got some good news on the straight eight big bridge front. I was able to uh, get the end flywheel with the starter ring gear on it uh, machined here. It's a big uh, Briggs, uh, like 12 horse uh, flywheel that has the, used to have the separate plastic fins there, but of course I don't need them for this application. The problem was that the, the shaft was uh, tapered as uh, all Briggs and other flywheel shafts are, and uh, I have a straight shaft mounted on so I had to adapt it for a straight shaft, and uh, there wasn't enough meat there to just uh, bore it out and put a, a keyway in it so board it out and I'm going to get a, a one inch um, this is an X type hub so it'll get, get welded in there and hopefully uh, that'll everything will work there I'm going to go contact ACDC welding to see if he thinks he can weld that in there securely so but uh, anyway it, it appears that uh, we'll soon have a uh, starter gear that uh, I can uh, try to start the beast up with. So we've got the flywheel with the hub all welded into it there. Might not look like perfection but as long as it holds that's what matters. There's it, uh, welded both sides there. Eh? 
so here's hoping it all pans out and works fine. Got the crankshaft here with the extended uh, and enlarged uh, keyway in it there. For some reason it was a smaller size than the standard uh, key, but we'll make her all work one way or another. As you can see, this isn't exactly a primo crankshaft here. Got to polish the rod journal up on it there. But it's the only one I had that was the larger one inch on the, the uh, output side there. And I wanted it really large to hold on the flywheel, so that's the way it goes. You gotta use parts that are available to you.